Hello everyone. Good evening. So shall we start? All right. We're discussing um, essay writing. But before we get on with it, uh, many congratulations to all of you. I um, really believe that you've done well and um, I really hope that you keep doing even better. And uh, when we talk about essay writing, what are the things that come to our mind? Uh, what should be the, you know, which should be the major components of an essay? Write down please. Send me your answers. This will be, it will be uploaded, Suraj. Don't worry about it. Content, okay. Shilpa writes that it is content which matters a lot as far as the, you know, you know, essay writing is concerned. Agreed. Anything else, Shilpa? Or anybody else for that matter? Prandtli believes structure makes a great deal of difference as well. Correct. Suraj also believes so. All right. Anything else? Organization of ideas. Correct, Rohit. Presentation. Absolutely right. So when we talk about, you know, these terms like organization, uh, control over language, RT, you are absolutely right. Organization, presentation of ideas, uh, the structure of the entire, you know, thing that we have written that we want to present. Uh, you know, there are a few things which we need to uh, take into consideration before we actually write an essay. Uh, <coughs> Let's take a look at a few things before we continue. The most important thing that we need to understand is that many B schools like these ones, right, they've replaced DD with um, essay writing task. Some of the other schools which uh, may take essay writing tests are then taken to IFT, etc. Right. So approximately, we're given around half an hour, or you know, uh, the time limit ranges between 22 minutes to or 15 minutes to half an hour. All right. Now, tell me one thing, dear friends. Is it possible for any evaluator to evaluate all the writing skills of a person only within this much period of time? Is it possible? Yes or no? What do you believe? Shilpa says no, so does Nikunj, and they are absolutely correct. Okay, Arti says yes. Now, there's a contradiction. Now, you know, as far as your writing skills are concerned, one thing is for sure that a lot of factors will play an important part once you start writing. Number one, it will be your knowledge of the content. Another thing which will be important will be your presentation, your interpretation. In addition to that, what really makes a lot of difference is the pressure. How do you handle it? Because writing an essay at your home is different, entirely different from writing an essay in a, in an, in a quote, uh, quote unquote examination hall. So these are two you know, different things. We cannot uh, intermingle them. We cannot confuse them. So what happens is we need to understand that we've got limited time in which we have to express ourselves. So what to do so that the expression comes out clearly and the interviewer, rather the examiner uh, who will read our essay, who will evaluate the essay written by us, is also able to, you know, evaluate the um, the paper as well as he or she is able to understand what we're trying to say. So by and large it means conveying what we think. So we shall continue. Okay, what does an essay reflect? Does it reflect an individual's personality? Let's discuss this. How many of us think that it does reflect an individual's personality and if it does, in what sense it will? How does it reflect an individual's personality? Any answers? I'm still waiting for you people. Come on, come on. Let's respond. Let's. Okay, okay, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, creativity, attitude, tone, fluency, uh, opinions. All right. Whether the person is optimistic or pessimistic. Okay. Lots of things, actually. Content, understanding, interpretation. Correct. But there is one more thing. You know. When we talk about individual's personality perception also, when I mentioned that word, pressure, it plays a very important part. All interviewers know that any person will be under a lot of pressure while writing the essay. So what happens is, you know, the evaluators also believe 
that the person who's writing the essay up despite being in so much of pressure right sometimes may not be able to express himself or herself clearly so a very important part of an individual's personality is how do you handle uh, handle the pressure also right so we need to be absolutely spot on we need to be at ease and that should highlight in our writing pressure starts playing and we at times commit silly mistakes for example we repeat lines for example in one line i have written that um, for example demonetization will have long lasting effects uh, in another line i write uh, there will be a lot of effects of demonetization and they will continue for a long time so that will tell the examiner that i am not in the right frame of mind or i have not been able to digest the pressure absorb the pressure so that is a real problem an individual's personality you know includes a lot of things just like you said you know attitude your approach your uh, you know uh, hold on language also your interpretation about the concept but it also highlights your ability to handle pressure uh, is it clear dear friends shall i move to the next point okay so be very careful about it right ensure that you do not make silly mistakes just keep telling yourself this is to be done this is to be avoided right be clear okay and sometimes while being in pressure we may write ambiguous lines as well okay the next one is um, his or her ideas views exactly what you mentioned our views our opinions they will be highlighted through what we write so be specific and be sensible somebody is asking how to write an abstract write on abstract topics uh aru just give me some time towards the end of this session we will deal with all kinds of topics you know uh, there are certain standard tricks which apply to virtually all kinds of essays so we shall discuss those right for the time being let's understand uh, what more uh, you know does an essay reflect our ideas we have discussed it analysis inferences values you know when we talk about these terms it is quite clear that while reading an essay written by a person the the reader the evaluator may start building perceptions also so that is why we need to be absolutely clear and we need to strike the balance i do not want any of my students to present himself or herself as very stringent in an essay you know by the word stringent i mean that imagine we are writing about should india attack pakistan or not now somebody who writes india should definitely attack pakistan pakistan have been you know um or pakistan has been indulged in various terrorist activities in india and they should be made to pay for that all that stuff so that will be too much that will be extreme right so don't take the extreme view right be sensible be balanced okay now by being sensible i mean that your inferences should not highlight that you are an extremist or you have a tendency to take extreme steps right because at the end of the day they are least bothered about your content quote and quote content but more than that they are bothered about your attitude which you will reflect through your content so your content will speak for you so if a student if a candidate ignores the importance of you know the image that will be built during the essay results may not be very favorable thus it is very imperative for us to be sensible and to be cautious to be you know confined to the correct views to not be too harsh to not be extreme okay and our inferences should also not reflect that we are uh, too much actually quote quote the next important point is attitude and aptitude again more or less the same your approach right and your communication abilities now communication involves a lot of things actually the the meaning of 
the word communication the definition is also the you know how do we define communication skills it is um, the art of being understood actually right so if we are able to portray what rather convey what we are thinking about correctly the reader will probably get the right message and that may strengthen our candidate on the other hand if that's that message gets distorted the entire process from our perspective will be impaired so definitely that needs to be avoided now what to do while mentioning while while writing or while um, <coughs> talking about communication skills communication is you know the ability to express yourself okay so that ability to express is definitely through words in a written essay now what happens is for writing an essay and i'm using words which do not suit the topic right that communication will be distorted the correct message will not reach the reader so what really will happen is you know in that situation my personality my attitude my you know thought process will be interpreted in a wrong manner by the by the evaluator further when we talk about communication skills we need to be very precise about how difficult words do we choose never try to just uh, you know impress the evaluator only by using very different words very difficult words because english is a very contextual language we need to understand that for example the word expire and dead these are synonyms now can we use them interchangeably can we yes or no come on okay there's a question uh, gorav wants to know what exactly is aptitude all right so shilpa has answered him it means ability or talent yes actually your your ability you know your prowess your um, power to deal with a typical concept any concept for that mean that matter okay uh, shil uh, aru asks if the essay is opinion based and can we go in extremes like if we totally disagree so can we say no yes you may say no you may go to that you know the approach could be extreme but words cannot be the remedies that you suggest they should not be extreme for example in order to you know improve the number increase the number of uh, girl children in india we cannot afford to uh, kill boys right so that will be too much that will be extreme okay so when we at uh, when we talk about synonyms uh, gorov says expire and dead yes we can use them interchangeably uh, okay let's take a sentence for that matter one sentence reads this drug is dead is the sentence correct or not please write is the sentence correct no aru says no shilpa says no and everybody else says no all right so what should be the correct word here a drug is expired not dead right the same thing absolutely correct the same thing could be said about a passport it may not be dead so we were discussing about um, communication skills and you know how to um, present ourselves our thoughts you know which words to be used which not to be so in short that you use the correct words uh, we discussed that dead and expired uh, example now this is something which many students miss out on for example the word pluck it has got two meanings one is a noun another one is a verb so you know when we discuss about the words that we use in an essay they should be moderate not only in terms of difficulty but also in terms of their impact in terms of you know their their seriousness they should be they should not be very grave so so that uh, nobody is offended by use of such words and be very careful about using synonyms we were discussing about pluck it has got two meanings we should be absolutely spot on with the secondary meanings of the words that we are using as well for example pluck uh, is a verb as well as is a noun it means courage and it means to break also right it means to pull okay so we should now continue all right what is a good essay the content the subject matter on the topic that is imperative now if somebody believes that he or she will write an essay about um, india pakistan relationship 
and they keep writing about you know um, what's happening inside India, what's happening inside Pakistan. That may not be the correct uh, approach. You know, we have to be around the topic. We cannot afford to digress. Um, the organization is the second point. How the argument is constructed using examples, supporting ideas from the introduction to the conclusion. Now, examples are a must, but we also know when to use them, where to use them, and how many to be used. Presentation. Uh, yes, Shilpa, agreed. Euphemism. Sometimes we need to, you know, give a stern message by using milder words. For example, if a teacher wants to ask one student to get out of the room but he or she is also a little concerned about how the student will feel like so you know rather than saying uh, get out of the class a better way to put this put across the same message could be would you please forget the class for a while you know like that so that is called euphemism we may use it uh, presentation reads style use of language correct sentences and spellings and ease of reading Okay, we have discussed most of these. What is style? The style of writing should be, style is actually made of use of language also, correct sentences also. So style should be very simple. Uh, it should be normal. You know, it should not seem as if you are trying to impress, absolutely, the tones also, impress the author with only words and, it, and that you do not have content. In addition to, to this, I would like to specifically mention this correct sentences. Now, what is the trick to write correct sentences? Keep your sentences short, simple and short. Because when we write or speak long sentences, the probability of committing errors goes higher. That needs to be avoided because it is a proven fact, short sentences will take less of labor. So that you know probability of committing errors goes down and um, ease of reading obviously the shots and the shortest sentences will be easily read so are we clear shall we move on to the next slide dear friends okay all right thank you now these are the evaluation parameters what are the parameters on which the evaluators will evaluate our papers comprehension how much do we comprehend the topic you know and that should reflect that we actually understand the topic somebody asked me about jingoism a little while ago so you know vocab sometimes can be very tricky uh, so beware you know be sure that you know the meanings of words right otherwise try to think about because if it is a given sentence Sometimes you may be able to spot the meaning of the word in a given sentence, right? According to the tone. Originality of thought. Now, when we talk about thought, it has got to be original, but never try to be over creative. For example, just in order to satisfy the um, you know the the parameter of originality of thought to come. To make our paper stand well on this parameter we should not rather we could not afford to claim that you know that Pakistan is the worst country for that matter right if it is if the the essay is based on India Pakistan relationship we cannot say that so what to do in order to be able to present that the thought is original try to think about something which is your own you know, give examples. We need to quote examples. But what we un interpret from those examples also needs to be told. Because otherwise, if we only keep quoting examples, it would seem as if we have presented a list. It is not only the list. We also need to interpret it and present our own interpretation. Right. And clarity of expression that comes with small sentences, correct words, all that. Okay. Fair logic to build uh, arguments. Logic has to be given, you know. We cannot afford to bypass logic. Without logic, we cannot sustain in a written text. And constructive thinking to present ideas. We have discussed it actually, logically and effectively. Short sentences, properly arranged. And towards the end of this class, I'll also tell you how to arrange an essay.
okay so shall we continue all right so we are moving forward now okay <clears throat> step one read and understand the core of the topic now what is core of the topic what do we understand by the term core your answers please i'm waiting what do we understand by the word core just the essence of the topic now if a candidate misses the essence the crux absolutely the crux of the topic he or she will never be able to attempt the essay write the essay in a proper manner because the right thing will be missing throughout second is brainstorming and idea generation ideas need to be generated you need to think a lot and you know whenever we quote examples it is all about the interpretation of the examples we can generate ideas from there they will be a great help to us but we should know which examples to use and where right step three compose the essay now the composition includes a lot of things uh, we'll discuss them also and review and check for writing skills this is important we must review what have we written it's not that we believe that you know the first draft will be the final one and i've written it and that's it we should be open to making certain changes be a little flexible you know because one uh, when we are writing an essay it becomes quite easy that we get enamored with what we've written sometimes it seems to us that i've written well but in reality, what if I have missed a few details, a few important details, right? So in order to avoid that situation, in order to safeguard ourselves against any errors that we have already committed and we have not been able to spot them, we must review. Okay, so shall we move to the next slide? All right. Topic one. Should there be reservations? Define reservations. Can any one of us define reservations? You'll have to write it here. Can anyone? Biases. Okay. Correct. Quota. Being very specific. Very good. Anything else? Reservations. That's it. When seats are given on the basis of race. Oh my goodness. Manish. That doesn't happen in India. Special privilege. Okay. Be biased towards lower sections. That's very interesting. You people are very interesting people. I must tell you that. Anyways, uh, jokes apart. But let's not get digressed. When we talk about reservations, the word itself means being biased. Right. So, those by, you know, that bias may come in different forms. So, the topic has to definitely include the bias towards the weaker sections also. Okay. But we need to also understand why was reservation given. Now, Let's construct an essay, I mean, in words, for example, right? Uh, the initial part of the paragraph should define reservations. What is actually reservation, right? The following part should underline a bit of a history of reservation. Why was it introduced? What was the purpose, right? And when was it introduced? Okay, something of that sort. Is it clear, dear friends? Okay. And, okay, the following part must mention a few examples about reservation that this was done or that was done, right? Because in the middle part, you generally explore, you generally explain, you generally, you know, highlight different issues with a lot of examples. Okay, all right, Gaurav, don't take it too hard, dear. Uh, the next concept that we discuss is idea generation how to generate ideas okay have we are we making notes do we need to you may write this word you know uh, what you call this filter technique yeah please, please keep taking notes sometimes you know we recall them at the right stage so Social inequalities in rural and urban areas in urban India like untouchability. This was one of the reasons maybe, right? Because we talk about reservation being given to people, you know, a specific set of people and uh, some people also question it. But then 
they've paid for centuries, for years, for tech, forget about years, for ages for this, right? And uh, some people who are Dalits are still in dire straits. They're living a very difficult life. So, you know, all those things have to be in. You may have your perspective. You may suggest that reservations are not good, but there will be one perspective, you know, which, which will definitely be opposite to what yours says. So we need to be aware of both. Okay, stand may be your own. That is entirely your call, what you want to write. But we need to keep into consideration different aspects and perspectives. So reservations for socially and educationally backward classes, Article 15, uh, political. Okay, this S stands for, I mean, this filter S stands for social, right? So this is how we actually try to generate ideas if the topic is a social one. Now this caste, society, they all are social topics, right? Uh, status of women in India, all this is uh, social. So the right approach is to think about the inequalities or the social scenario, right? And then proceed. Next is political. Okay, what if the topic is politics based? All right, uh, do we people follow news, dear friends? Yes or no? Do we follow news? Very good. Anybody who does not? Great, 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 great. Not much. Okay. Mandar, no dear. That's something uh, which is not advisable. Uh, Suraj, you also must start following news because that is one platform where you will gain a lot of knowledge about uh, politics. No problem, Shilpa. But keep following news. At least sometimes we are able to recall. Okay, so if the topic is politics based, you know, for example, caste based, vote politics, women reservation bill, you know, we need to think about um, the context, the political implications and relate it to what we have seen in the news or in the newspapers, right? Uh, so, you know, the first technique is to segregate the topic, to decide which category, which this will fit into is it a social topic is it a political one only then we can generate ideas the following the following uh, category is historical some topics may be historical so if we talk about historical topics we have to go back to the history uh, for example genesis of caste system in india and uh, the timeline set by uh, dr b r ambedkar uh, who was the chairperson of the drafting committee where, uh, which um, you know, uh, drafted our uh, constitution. So we need to know a bit about history also. How many people actually follow history? Raise your hands. Sorry, just used to, you know, classroom teaching a lot. All right, great, 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 great. Not one bit says Gaurav, that's interesting. The right approach to following history is, you know, read some good history books maybe if you can, if you want to pursue history uh, you know those school level books are good to you know actually know about our history otherwise uh, a few good books may be uh, a few good historians may be referred to for example Romila Thapar is a good historian she writes quite well NCRT books also correct no problem R Romila Thapar is very good Devendra uh, you may follow Romila Thapar. Yeah, she's a historian. So you will gain a lot of knowledge. Okay, so we need to know a bit of history also. And for that, we need to read a lot. Shall we continue? Are we ready, dear friends? All right. Okay, next category is economic. Now we need to understand, is the topic economic in terms of nature creamy layer reservation and jobs and educational institutes this creamy layer is it, it actually denotes the richest people you know the, the, the topmost people who, who are doing very well and reservations and jobs and educational institutes something which somebody was referring to a, a little while ago so such topics need to be dealt with in a different manner you know if it is related to economy, the example should also be somewhat economical in nature. Um, sorry, economic in nature, not economical. Um, and if we know that 
it involves economy a lot of stats will come into play for example you know examples like per capita income examples like the number of people who are beggars in india 73 lakh people are beggars in india right all those stats will come into play if the topic is legal something related to the indian law then the indian constitution beyond doubts will feature right uh, shilpa says she is asking a question reservations can be social as well as economic absolutely correct but um, you know she's put reservations in quotes so uh, the topic reservations it could be social and economic also more than economic it becomes social if it has been presented in such a manner for example how does reservation impact our social relationship in that situation it becomes totally social because the outcome will be something which is social in nature but if it is about economy then it will be how does it impact the economic condition of the ones who are availing reservation and the ones who are not availing something like that so we are talking about um, shilpa did you get it understood all right so when we talk about the indian constitution or you know these um, uh, topics like uh, you know uh, which involve any legal aspects the approach is different now we know that we may not know law all of us may not know in that situation we have to ensure that the basic things are known to us the uh, you know uh, depth in depth we obviously will not know but we can think of terms like pil terms like judicial activism you know which are common in use okay so that may help us now priyanka asks a question are statistics always expected in an essay priyanka if it is an essay which is based on economy statistics will play an important part but if you fail to recall any at that moment right don't worry just use generalizations or just use universal examples try to recall stats if you don't recall don't panic okay has your answer be rather has your question been answered priyanka okay so some topics are based on technology just like these two right so uh, what we do is we understand that you know this is a topic which is based on technology so try to go into the depth of uh, the concept again now what is the topic about what is for example if it is about a phone right when was a phone invented uh, the first phone at least to set the background you know Uh, what is a mobile phone how useful it is all that stuff will get into it is reservation in iits iim scaling merit uh, yes that's again a technical topic technological topic because it will talk about the ability of the person of the people who are selected there okay gorov asks is reservation in iit a technological aspect yes gorov to a certain extent it is largely because it will impact the technology for example you know i'm very weak at technology i actually am so if a person like me goes into um, a company where i have to create a design or, or, or do something very technical you know i'll make a mess of it so that will actually impact not only the other people but the entire economy okay aru asks our economy is really suffering because of reservation companies during campus placements don't hire people uh, from quota okay uh, let's continue with it i guess let's not get digressed uh, you have my email id we can anyway any day discuss all these aspects dear friends let's continue uh, shall we move to the next slide some topics are international is reservation making india less competitive in world now because it talks about the world it involves the international scenario also now how to approach that kind of an essay what should be our you know attitude towards the essay how to generate ideas we should know what is happening um, you know around the world and we may include the angle that if we hire incompetent people though it is incorrect to believe that people who are based on reservation people who have been selected on the basis of reservation are 
incompetent it is not that competent and incompetent people are seen everywhere in all castes and you know we are in you know you cannot generalize it actually so yes suraj it is vikas pahava 123 at gmail.com towards the end i'll give you my email id right okay so but we should know that uh, you know the example may be that if a person who is incompetent and has entered the the government sector or the economy for that matter how will it impact india's relationship with the other countries how will it impact india's growth in terms of quote unquote international arena uh, the similar policy of affirmative action in usa to more or less the same right the approach will be the same uh, nandita asks can we uh, um, in fact she says we can talk about quality of human resource absolutely correct human resource will be a part of it okay religion many topics are based on religion and you know it becomes quite a heated kind of a topic because in india it is one of the burning topics so religion involves feelings of people you know the emotions of people so when we talk about reservations for minorities um, or from any other report for that matter even mandal commission report you know specifically when we discuss caste religion will be a part of it okay when you talk about reservation religion will come but some other topics may also be religious quote and quote in that uh, manner uh, for that matter also why because religion in india is virtually everything people follow religion people not only practice religion people live religion so if the topic is about religion you know what you need to ensure is that you do not get swayed you do not get you know Uh, overwhelmed by your emotional feelings or uh, your emotional stand points right be moderate okay control your emotions even if you are very 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 god loving okay so shall we continue okay all right there is a popping's technique also which is used for generally um, what kind of topics let's understand that people what kind of people do we find you know corrupt dishonest or honest or Uh, um, very good, genuine, very helpful, altruistic, all kinds of people. Then we move to objects. All these will be objects, right? And um, this, uh, th- these are largely from the commerce point. Okay, uh, place. This P stands for people. O stands for objects, right? Another P stands for place. Some essays are based on history or place, rather. For example. um all these things you know and even if you are asked to write about jallianwala bag so that will also be a historical place okay an important place a place of significance and in such a scenario see when it is about people we can write we can use generalizations to a certain extent when it is about objects we need to be the the approach is to be more objectified you know we have to be very specific right when we write about places we need to know little bit at least at least little bit about those places behavior rude and aggressive behavior right and events for example this so by and large so far we have observed that if we do not read enough it will be very very difficult for us to present ourselves in an essay because all these things need content and from where to get the content through reading agreed shall we continue okay we'll continue with this actions like on a killing female feticide negligent behavior if a topic um surrounds these areas how to approach it let's see your answers first how to approach such an such an essay imagine the essay is about on a killing what to do in that situation your friends i'm still waiting for your response how to approach come on come on come on absolutely correct well done pranjali very happy with you really well done you know we first need to define it what is on a killing because we cannot afford to start giving examples start writing about on a killing this happened did that happened there it happened without having introduced the topic we need to introduce the topic right we need to define the topic first if we don't do that the topic rather the essay will not have that life which it needs you know so preparing a background is very important we also need to write little bit about 
at least a little bit about when did it start or how did it start how did it develop you know something related to the history of the concept also if we remember it if we if we can recall it okay uh, next one is nature these are probably the easiest of all environmental degradation catastrophic events because we all can write about nature but still what we need to understand is that what is easy for you will be easy for the others as well so how to get an edge how to secure an edge over the others when we are taking we are writing an essay on nature or a topic which is close to nature for example forests right yes what could be done dear friends stats absolutely right we may use stats okay uh, we may use our own interpretation we may use some r rather we may recommend uh, you know some more some uh, we may suggest some solutions also to the existing problem and we may look at the concept from a future perspective that was that will definitely give us the edge and more than anything else you know the order has to be spot on it has to be correct okay uh, society again decline in values models all these are social concepts you know but when we talk about society are we sure that there has been only decline in values yes there have been some positives also so we need to mention those as well so again the the idea is that you know that you strike the balance between the two don't be either too extreme and don't sound too moderate right so okay shilpa please answer lakshya's question lakshya has asked me could you suggest any website for current expected essay topics lakshya actually on the web there are thousands of websites which cater to this right which will tell you about a lot of essays essay topics but the only thing that at the end of the day will work is your reading read newspapers read a lot follow news because it is very unlikely that any institute though i'm not giving um, in fact forget about me nobody can guarantee that this will happen but it is very unlikely the probability is very low that any institute people will ask you to write an essay which is not based on news or events generally there are two areas from which they select news current affairs or social uh, sorry that you know what you call that abstract topics for example red so that's how they ask questions you know so it's always better for us to read more as much as possible the more we read the better we will be okay so let's continue shall we move to the next slide okay how real and relevant are reality shows this may be a topic you um, may write on it right just for practice it could be one of the topics right a lot of topics like this are generally asked that you know students are asked to write essays on such topics what is the reason behind that the reason is simple the interpretation comes along with these topics you know it is not that they are not only factual they are more based on interpretation as well uh, aru asks a question there was an essay art is a four lettered word what to write in it i could not find anything all right okay any answers from the public yes dear friends art is a four lettered word what to write in it gorav asks can we also write their effects absolutely right shilpa writes creativity anybody else absolutely nikunjo you got it absolutely right well done uh, how many people know us about uh, know about long words absolutely ashwin your your interpretation is absolutely correct manish's uh, interpretation is also very interesting anyways when we talk about art you know it is just a four letter word and i guess we all know about long words in english right you know words like powerful words like intelligent important significant these are you know long words but what is very interesting is this short word art you know it's just a three three letter word and they're telling that it is a four letter word right 
that was the topic that means there is something which is called interpretation something which is called which goes beyond art you know beyond these three letters quote unquote art so a lot of things art will include everything because actually it subsumes life you know it it involves virtually everything so that may be the fourth letter which is interpretation because when we look at art you know there is there are two methods to approach an essay on art in particular one is that absolutely correct nandita is right that art should exist for art's sake right this is one aspect which used to uh, be advocated by the people in england those people were called surrealists so they advocated they had they started a movement in the 1920s um so uh, the, in fact not the surrealists rather the the avant-gardists the term is avant-garde a v a n t g a r d e you may write if you want to a v a n for national t for toy avant t will be silent right guard g a r d e so those avant-gardists highlighted the fact that art may exist for itself as well however there is another school of thought which believes that art should highlight life for example we watch movies that is also art and it highlights life you know it talks about what kind of society are we so it goes beyond those three letters it cannot be confined it cannot be limited to only what it looks like is it clear whoever asked this question all right so shall we continue okay how real and relevant are reality shows let's see is it visible dear friends can you interpret it take 2 minutes interpret it and let me know is it a social topic or a political one or economical or environmental or what absolutely it is a social topic right so which should be the points which we shall discuss in such a such an essay social because you know when we talk about reality shows they are a part of our lives today and uh, many you know the 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 hopes of many people surround uh, reality shows many people believe that if they participate in reality shows if they do well they will probably be successful impact on society impact on feelings of people impact on dreams of people and if they actually turn out to be successful then impact on lives right so a lot of aspects you may quote a few examples you know for example suniti chauhan um, who came from meri awaz suno is a very renowned singer uh, shilpa reads it is in the end a directed and structured concept although named as reality show do we think it is scripted correct let's not get into that anyways so that's how we need to put it but at the same time you know sunidhi chauhan is not the only person who has participated in a, a reality show uh, you know there may be some others a lot of others in fact who participated in reality shows did well but could not reach yes failure examples could not reach you know great heights of success very high altitudes so both points need to be taken but do not take a definite stand towards the end do not be too stringent even if you take a stand that's okay but do not be too harsh do not be too extreme okay so shilpa reads uh, writes yes so many participate but to reach the summit one has to be exceptional correct and there are a lot of factors you know which play a very important part uh, not only your talent your ability many many factors many factors actually so all those factors will contribute to a person's success in a reality show and some people not some actually a lot of people absolutely who have been the winners of reality shows even they are nowhere to be seen so that keeps happening anyways uh, let's continue shall we move to the next slide all right step 2 composition very important now introduction the issue of this is controversial on the one hand right can you take an idea okay just go through it then tell me some important points about it just go through it just read it yes what strikes you the most about this slide okay let's talk about the introduction the issue of dash is controversial now be very specific dear friends some issues may not be controversial right so we cannot use such words um if 
the topic is actually not controversial correct how to structure the uh, sentences on the one hand on the other hand so we are giving both views right all right uh, we move to paragraph 2 to 4 now because an essay will include paragraphs paragraphs 2 to 4 one reason for my belief is that but uh, dear friends please be very sure that you do not use personal examples in a paragraph absolutely correct should I start and conclude uh, do not use personal examples for example once upon a time I went there this happened that happened nobody is there to substantiate that right universal examples may be quoted that's fine personal examples will matter only if the essay is somewhat personal you know if the topic is that uh, yes absolutely facts will probably be much much better rather than quoting personal examples all right so this is how we close the essay shall we continue okay important step review and revise the essay once you have done it once you've written it go for it again right look for these things spellings grammar continuity of idea and relevant examples all right shall we move forward okay thank you very much and apart from these uh, are we all ready with a pen and a paper i've got more to tell you are we ready okay so shall we start okay write down the first word now see Dear friends, we have discussed enough about, you know, how to um, write an essay. What is an essay? You know, what is the story, the importance of start, intro, then body, what all? Or what kind of topics do we generally see in an essay? But what about paragraphs? Because an essay includes paragraphs. So if we lose our grip on paragraphs, if our, if our paragraphs are not well constructed, our essay, you know, will go for a toss. So, in order to avoid that, what should we do? Write down the first two words, topic, sentence. So, the first two words are topic, sentence. Uh, what do we understand by these words, topic, sentence? Come on, let's discuss. What is a topic, sentence? What do you think it should be? Anybody? What should be the topic, sentence? The main idea. Okay, now see, imagine you've written five paragraphs for one essay, right? All are different paragraphs, five or six paragraphs. All will carry different idea. Now, every paragraph should include a topic sentence. Among the first two, three lines, you should be able to highlight the idea of the paragraph. You know, the overview of the paragraph. The reader should know, even if he or she does not have the time to read the entire paragraph, and he reads the first two or three lines, he or she should get an idea as to what all will be there in the rest of the paragraph so that the reader is facilitated. So never forget to include the topic sentence in every paragraph. Is it clear, dear friends? Okay. Uh, any doubts on the topic sentence? Any doubts related to it? Anything which is not clear? Everything is clear. Very good. Uh, can you quote an example of a topic sentence? Imagine the topic is, um, okay, in Indian economy. Give one topic sentence in any paragraph. Right one, I'm still waiting. All right, correct. So, imagine I want to highlight that um, Indian economy is not doing too well. The first two or three lines of my paragraph should highlight the fact that, you know, or should give an overview that, in an economy may not be doing very well uh, for example the first two lines will be I may start it with an although that although it seems that India is shining India is rising still there is something which needs to be looked at so that yes impediments also so that will give the reader a hint that this paragraph may include some information which will uh, narrate or which will highlight the fact that everything in the, in the Indian economy is not going according to the plan. All right. So let's move on to the next concept. Shall we, dear friends? Is it clear to all of you? Great. Second is unity of idea. Write down. Unity of idea. What does it mean? Any ideas? Unity of idea? 
Imagine I am writing a paragraph on who is um, a better player, Virat Kohli or um, Mahindra Singh Dhoni. And I am, I hope we all know about Dhoni and Kohli. Do we all follow cricket or do we all know about them? Yes, all right, great, great, great. You, you never know, you know. <laughs> we, we cannot afford to assume these days. Anyways. So when we write about Virat Kohli and Mahindra Singh Dhoni and the topic is, you know, who is a better batsman, Kohli or Dhoni? And uh, in order to delve deeper into the topic, I need to present some flaws in the batting of Kohli as well as some strengths. The same about Dhoni. So if I am discussing Virat Kohli's technique, in one paragraph, I have praised him to a great degree. You know that he bats well all that stuff will it be wise for me to criticize him in the same paragraph or should i need another right rather another paragraph for it your answers please absolutely correct this is called unity of ideas one paragraph any paragraph for that matter cannot afford to go self-contradictory it has to promote only one idea one paragraph cannot advocate differing ideas. If there are different examples, that's okay, that's fine. But they should promote the same idea. Yes, single thought in one paragraph, absolutely right. So is it clear, dear friends? Shall we move to the next point? Economy of words. Economy of words. Dream topic, that's nice. Have it written? All right. What do we understand by these words? Economy of words. Hmm. Absolutely. You know, there are three qualities of a sentence. That it is clear, it is correct, and it is also concise. It is to the point. It is brief. It is not, you know, wayward. It, it is definitely not extra. Right. Yes, brevity. Suraj writes, uh, use words judicially. And to the point, Shilpa writes, less words but powerful instead of longer ones. Absolutely correct. Yes, it should not be verbose. Everybody is right. Now, what happens is, you know, the inordinately verbose paragraphs generally impact the interviewer or the, the evaluator in such a manner that he or she tends to lose focus or sometimes even the interest absolutely so and you know to make the matters worse it may annoy the evaluator why because we have been mentioning unnecessary details one we may repeat things too and we have not been able to cut short or precisely present our ideas our topic rather our essay is going beyond the scope of the topic and that is exactly where the problem will begin because forget about your own interpretation your own idea your own personality your tone your attitude your approach you will have hampered or you know impaired the interest of the examiner that will be a self-destructive approach so kindly avoid writing long sentences unnecessarily uh, put on details and if there are three examples you want to highlight all those examples should have something different right for example you know if I'm writing about a teacher who hits students brutally in his classes and I quote three examples right one day he hit a student with a stick another day he hit a student with another stick another day he hit a student with another stick so where is the difference you know the same thing could have been said in one line that on three different days he hit students with sticks so rather than absolutely correct uh, okay what to do in such a situation Please don't get into such a situation, actually. Definitely not. We cannot afford to do that. Don't be verbose at all, right? So be specific, be concise, okay? So the next point is, I don't want any one of you to get into that situation. Stay away from that situation. Um, Mandar says, 
but as it happened we didn't know about jingoism all right jingoism is <laughs> actually this this term has troubled uh, of late this term uh, troubled many students of ours also jingoism means excessive patriotism uh, when <laughs> thank you thank you for the compliment dear thank you shilpa <laughs> so you know excessive uh, patriotism which goes towards a negative side uh lifetime learning okay thank you very much great so that needs to be you know seen now if i have a topic like jingoism which demands some extreme words even then i cannot afford to be you know verbose that is the last thing that i want to do we we also should imagine you know if we are the evaluators and we are evaluating a text a written text by somebody and somebody keeps giving unnecessary details right how will we feel like will be annoyed anybody will be for that matter isn't it so it is always better to avoid that situation okay so we are running short of time dear friends uh no man <laughs> uh, it never happened to me i mean at least i cannot recall right now whether it happened or not but i mean i i really don't know whether it happened or not what would be right what would be right rather when topic is 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 <laughs> lots of things uh, is means something positive you know so include or all positivity okay so we have to discuss those abstract topics as well uh, the next important thing is uh, write down coherence coherence c o h e r e n c e what does it mean what is coherence dear friends absolutely connectivity nothing in the entire paragraph should be irrelevant nothing should go beyond the context and learn the art learn the trick to connect sentences connect paragraphs for example we go back to the same concept that we were discussing dhoni and kohli in the first paragraph or in the second or third one for that matter i write that uh, dhoni is a very good batsman and in the next paragraph i need to introduce virat kohli now how do i introduce shall it be an uh, should it be an abrupt introduction definitely not then what do i do i may write you know continuing from that line that um, however it is not only mahindra singh dhoni who has served the indian cricket quite well others like virat kohli have also done well isn't it right so that will connect you know the two paragraphs absolutely uh, you know this abrupt introduction of a new idea of a new concept that also will distort the entire process and will impair the interest of the examiner okay so is it clear dear friends all right shilpa writes use conjunctions absolutely and introduce the new idea to link it to the previous one absolutely you know you know however um, further all these words will make a good impact anyways uh, write down some more points write introduction how to introduce now let's go for a brief replica when we introduce a topic uh we have to define it right dear friends and try not to insert a lot of examples in the introduction itself because introduction rather the the examples generally go to the uh what you call that body okay and uh, the body will be elaboration and those el that elaboration will come through examples itself then we come to conclusion okay how do we conclude any answers from you how do we conclude an essay who is better dhoni or kohli let's conclude this let's conclude this who is a better batsman mahendra singh dhoni or kohli who is a better batsman absolutely a balanced approach is required you know saying that um, both have their own place in the indian team and they've benefited uh, indian cricket in their own manners in their own style absolutely right that will be the best answer to how to conclude anyways uh, we still have uh, a few minutes dear friends um, 
Absolutely correct. Absolutely right. Any questions from you? Uh, okay. If a topic is debatable, should we write diplomatically favoring both sides? Actually, you need to. Even if you take one stance, that's okay. But you should not at all, at any cost, sound harsh or extreme. Uh, another question is, can you mail this video? I missed initial 40 minutes of this lecture. I guess uh, it would be uploaded on YouTube. So, in fact, I'm sure of that. So, you will be able to see this video anyways. Uh, otherwise, somebody was asking for my email ID. Please write down Vikas Pahava. Vikas P A H A W A 123 at gmail.com. Right? If you have any queries, if you have, thank you, Shilpa. Thank you very much for that. Uh, if you have any queries, if anything troubles you, on which I can help you, I'll be very happy to do that. Right? And keep writing to us. Lovely being with you. Okay. In fact, do, do you have any questions right now? We still have some minutes. No? Shall we call it today? Anytime. Any, any, anytime, dear friends. I'll be very happy to help you. Thank you very much. Thanks for tolerating me.